today I, I will discuss some um, mathematical problems on uh, graph signal processing uh, with emphasis on the topics related to my uh, research in the last uh, few years. So this talk is uh, based on the uh, several joint papers with uh, my colleagues and uh, students from math and uh, in departments. So uh, here are list uh, uh, nine co-authors. Of course, this is incomplete uh, list. And uh, so I thank all of them for their contributions to this project. And of course, I also thank all of them um, uh, for your support in my career in the last 20, 30 years already. So uh, the topics I want to discuss today, I divide into uh, 10 parts. The first part I, in the introduction sections, I will discuss briefly about graph signal processing and some motivations and the challenge. As not all participants uh, uh, today are very familiar with graph signal processing. So I will recall some fundamental concepts about graph and graph signals in the uh, primary uh, uh, sections. Then we want to consider the uh, graph uh, Fourier transform. That's a fundamental concept in graph signal processing. As you know that uh, you know, many concepts in the classical uh, signal processing have been extended to the graph signal processing in the last 10 years. And you know, as I mentioned, the graph Fourier transform and as also I we know that we have many of uh, colleagues here is working on wavelet, and also we have the wave uh, transform have extended to the uh, graph settings and also field banks. So we will recall some concepts, and we I believe this is a crucial and uh, very uh, elementary and important. And next, I want to discuss briefly about fast retrieval uh, on the graph and also something related to the velocity field. And uh, the first trivial is, uh, uh, is a nonlinear problem to recover phase from, uh, of a signal from its Fourier uh, measurement. In the graph settings, similar problem also can be considered. So we will discuss more general ones. Consider effective value signals. And this is, uh, that's uh, what we want to discuss a little bit about philosophy field. You will see the de a little bit details later. So next, so I will introduce some basic concepts about the graph uh, signal processing, including uh, convolutions, which is defined as slow uh, graph Fourier transform and polynomial filters of graph shift, which is widely used in the uh, engineering literature, and also uh, in our general linear pro uh, procedures that's usually described by uh, matrices with in entries indexed on the vertex state of the graph. So field bank is a fundamental concept in classical uh, uh, processing. Usually it includes two operators, one is called down sampling, the other is up sampling. We observe that the down sampling and up sampling procedures cannot be defined in a proper way for general uh, arbitrary graph. So to circumvent the situation, the difficulty to define the down sampling and up sampling, so we introduce non subsampled -sample, graph uh, filter banks. And uh, this nearly, we, this includes, you know, the analysis field bank and the synth field bank. The analysis synth bank to decompose a, field, a signal into two components with different 
special specifications. Then most probably we need to do some uh, slash holding or whatever certain uh, processes. Then you want to use the synthesis or uh, field bank to recover the signals. And we can see that later. So and I'll introduce the non subsampled graphs field bank simplify a lot of problems. So we have uh, one section devoted to that topic. And in the procedures, we can see that that's the one important mathematic problem is uh, uh, play a crucial role. That's called all diagonal decays of inverse, uh, inverse uh, filtering. So, so the above uh, the the above all diagonals uh, decay property for the battery on graph can date it back to uh, Norbert Wiener's the work in nineteen forty two. So I, I would say I like thank it again for the center for the harmonic analysis and applications named after uh, Norbert Wiener's to provide me an opportunity to give a talk related to his audio uh, work. Stability is another fundamental concept in signal processing and many mathematical uh, field. Excuse me, uh, Dr. Sun. Um, it seems that some people are still only seeing uh, slide three. Is that the slide you wish to be on? Or... Uh, yes. Okay, okay. Uh, there are several questions about that in the chat. Okay. Okay, all right. so everything's uh, going so well. So in the next section, I will discuss a uh, little bit about stability of dynamic system and the samplings. So after that, we will discuss, uh, you know, uh, distributed implementations of inverse filters. We will propose so three different uh, algorithms that can be implemented at the vertex level. Finally, I will give the summary and uh, have some uh, discussions. Okay, so that's the overview of the, my talk. Now let's go to the, uh, you know, uh, really the talk. So the first is the introduction sections. So I would say that way. So graph signal processing provide a innovative framework to the data resident on the various networks and many in regular domains, such as specially distributed network, smart grid, uh, social networks, and many others. So graph sync processing also is emerging interdisciplinary uh, field as closely related to the graph theory and also for the applied harmonic analysis that you know, most of the audience today are very familiar with and also related to the numerical analysis. I believe that the, you know, the numerical analysis could be very important uh, uh, as, I, you know, as you will see that later. And uh, also I see that there's uh, um, um, more mathematicians who are now interested on that topics. They are probably more working on function analysis, different geometry, or numerical analysis, and many others. So in the last 10 years, we can see many important concepts in the classical signal processing have been extended to the graph settings, including you know, graph Fourier transform, graph wavelet transform, and the field banks, and but there are still many concepts have not been well defined, or you can say that you know it's not every agree the definition is well you know every agree about that. So such that as you know up sampling and down sampling, at least I can see that four or five definitions of up sampling and uh, you know uh, down sampling. So this is look like a, it's a good opportunity now for us to understand the mathematics of graph signal processing, or we can say the mathematical graph uh, processing 
on the on graph. So there are several uh, review papers available now. So one is uh, about seven years ago. Uh, you can see from the title, you can see this emerging field of si uh, signal uh, processing on graph. So you can see the basics, fundamental part about signal processing. And about two years ago, you can see uh, a review papers about the challenge and applications. But all those survey papers are from INIS uh, community. And also we have a special issues uh, last year now is about sampling signals on graph from theory to applications. There are many, uh, you know, excellent papers on that topic. So for those uh, interested in the graph signal processing and they have not, start, you know, tried to start it, there's a book chapters uh, about 100 pages, you know, it's a good introduction. And also we have uh, in the hands, uh, Isaac and Stephen and I, now is uh, editing a special issue on harmonic analysis on graphs for the uh, Journal of Fourier Analysis and Applications. And it should be ready, you know, in March or, or, or probably June, as, you know, you will see the, the whole special issue at that time. Okay, so now let's see uh, what's our, my motivation and what's the challenge for me. So my motivation essentially is uh, from the specially distributed network. So specially distributed network have been widely used in the wireless sensor network and also like smart grid, drum feed, and many real world applications. So as I said, the representative SD are sensor networks distributed on a, a spectral domains. With engines communicating with each other, with uh, broadcasting, with within fine lens. So usually the wireless communication, or sometimes is visually, uh, you know, visibility. And the topological, the topological structure of S and SDN can be described by a graph. And that graph is sparse and has finite burning dimensions. So I will give the definition of burning density uh, dimension uh, uh, probably next to the slide. And for that uh, system, the agents has equipped with data processing subsystems with limited capacity and also with complex sub, uh, uh, subsystem for data exchange with neighboring agents only. So the challenge here is the graph, you know that there's a very complex structures. There's a variety of graphs and many types of graphs, direct, indirect, and you know, sparse, non-sparse. And, and also we were, we were, I want to emphasize uh, another issue, mathematical issue is that the distributed implementations. So this is a very important and it's not easy to design. Okay, so a graph contains uh, you know, two states. One is a vertex state. So usually uh, it's a finite, but you can replace it by infinity. If it's like a C, the integer of uh, the set of integers, then it's the infinity state. And E is the edge state. So it contains you know, uh, a subset of the cross product between uh, V and V. And the models, uh, the graph in some way provide a flexible model to represent the complex, complicated equations between the data set. So here I can present two graphs. One is, uh, you know, Minnesota traffic sensor graph. The other is random geometric uh, graphs. So, uh, so random uh, ge geometric graphs there are n vertexes and randomly uh, located on the square uh, on the square of size zero or one. And uh, it's the two vertexes that have uh, edge, if they are, you know, a great distance is less than one over uh, square root of two n. So the number of edges is about, you know, two or three n. That's the number of edges. 
So, so now let's see what's the definition of the uh, Berry density. So we have uh, our assumption on the graph. We call it the graph is sparse, and satisfy uh, the property the number of uh, vertex in the uh, of the eyeballs is bounded by a polynomial. That's uh, d one g one plus r d, and d is considered as as a Berlin dimension. And this assumption is a little bit different with you know the uh, the concept. Uh, used in graph theory, it's called maximum degrees. That's the number of edges uh, for each vertex. So you can see that if if a graph have uh, a burden density d, then the degree is bounded by d one two power d. This also is a different with a little bit with the double counting measures in harmonic analysis. So and also you know that whenever the counting measures is a W measures, then it has a, a burning dimension, dimension D is less than the log 2D. But usually log 2D is much larger than uh, the burning uh, dimension. Excuse me, with these directed graphs, it looked like your original definition was directed, but now. These are, we always consider it's undirected graph. Okay, so the original definition was E contained in the subsets of V and V as opposed yeah, v and v to the and symmetric. Because otherwise we, we cannot define the, uh, the distance. Yeah, but the original definition you had E contained in V cross V. Yeah. The Cartesian product, that wouldn't be correct then. Uh, it's quite what we have to say that way E is symmetric. Yeah, E would be contained in the subsets of size two of V. Yeah. With repetition. Yes. <laughs> so graph signal is just a, a vector a resident on the a graph nodes. So, you know, X equal to XV and the, the index state is uh, the state of vertexes. Most probably, you know, XV, I mean, the, the entries at the vertex V is a real uh, number or compass number, and also could be a uh, vector value. So we will see that whenever we talk about velocity at each vertex, then there will be vector value. And uh, here there are, are two examples. On the right is a, a piecewise polynomial uh, signals Essentially, we have four scripts, and each script is a polynomial. So you can see that there's uh, some jump between scripts. So we'll use that property uh, a little bit later. Now let's go back to uh, the, uh, the, uh, the basic concept or fundamental concept in the graph signal processing. It's called graph Fourier uh, transform. So for the graph Fourier transform, you know, the concept is uh, the adjacent matrix and degree matrix and Laplace matrix. So Laplace matrix is D minus A. Because uh, as I assume that the graph is undirected. So the Laplace matrix is symmetric and positive semi-definite. So you can have the eigen decompositions. So UT lambda U then U is a unitary or orthogonal matrix. Then use the orthogonal matrix, you can define the graph Fourier transform. So Fourier transform X hat is equal to UX. And also you can define the inverse graph Fourier transform, just replace U by the transpose of U. So it's very simple, look like. And for the, uh, the signals, it piecewise constant signals on the Minnesota traffic graph on the right is a Fourier transform, of course, as the magnitude of that. So you can see for the piecewise constant function, you know that the Fourier transform, classical Fourier transform have certain decay. So you can see that also you have certain decay when the frequency is high, right? And of course, in the uh, first retrieval problems, is that possible to recover the signal from uh, as a phase. That's a, 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 you know, a nonlinear problem uh, we have discussed. Uh, the, you know, 
uh, we know that it's important and it was uh, discussed a long time ago. And about 10 years ago, and uh, Radu, and uh, Peter, and Dan had working on the first level slow uh, the frame uh, measurement. Okay, so now let's look at a, a little bit different problem. We want to consider the first curve problem for vector value signals. So now on each vertex, we have the vectors. Let's look at the three dimensional vector that are quite easier. So from certain you know, uh, frame measurement, so this linear combinations, then take the magnitude of the vectors. So just, let's see an even simpler example. So let's, we have a vector field. So Fi is vector field on the graph. So data we have is absolute flow, uh, speed. So that's the magnitude of Fi. And also relative speed is the difference of Fi and Fij. Whenever Ij is, uh, is age. If it's not age, we don't know the data, okay? So of course the problem, I know the Unix has become, you know, can you determine a, a G? So if you have the G, have the same measurement, same difference, of course, on the speed side, then whether you can find three by three uh, orthogonal matrix such that G equal to UF. It's true if the graph is a complete graph, but in general, it's not true. So that's why you know, we introduce uh, you know, a simplex graph to, uh, uh, to do that. So for the three dimensional, now we are working on three dimensional vector field. So given four points on the, uh, you know, a complete sample graph of all the four, you create a simplex of really this three simplex as tetrahedrals. And uh, when, when you have the edge, if those two uh, tetrahedrals have the uh, intersection is chain angles and these chain angles and now if we extend to the plane that not contain the origin, that's edge. Otherwise, those two uh, three simplex do not have edge. So in some way you're giving a vector field, you can create a simplex graph. Then we can use the, the connectivity of the three simplex graph to describe whether as the vector field can be uh, determined from the absolute uh, magnitude and the relative magnitude. So of course here in the theorem, I put it in the D, D dimensional, uh, but you know, uh, in our uh, construction of graph uh, simplex graph, I put D equal to three. So it's because it's true for object dimensions. Of course, this is a still wide open areas for the first retrieval for real, complex, and vector view, vector view valued graph symbols. Okay, so now let's go to the, uh, the next topic is about uh, the graph signal processing and field bank. So graph signal pro uh, processing, you can consider as a map from a graph signal to another graph signals. So Y equal to A, X, so if it's linear, then it's, it can be represented by a matrix with index in the vertex state. In the classical graph signal processing, convolution is a basic concept. For the graph signal processing, use so the graph Fourier transform, we can also define the convolutions. In general, we, uh, we have a filter, it's called polynomial filters of Laplacians. So that's the capital H, is summation from k equal one to k, h, k, l, k. So you can verify that h, x equal to the convolution between y and x for some y, and you can define y. Of course here, the filter must be a polynomial of graph uh, Laplacians, but in general, I know it's not true. That's why we, next we will introduce more general uh, polynomial filters. So the starting point is called 
graph shift. So the graph shift has uh, has a, a geometric width at most one. So that means its components s i j equal to zero if the distance between i and j is larger than ten. So the example the, you know are the Laplacian. So that means this is a, a more general concept than Laplacian. The other one is a symmetric normalized Laplacian. So in some way, I like the, uh, that the not symmetric normalized Laplacian because it's still uh, positive semi-definite, but all its eigenvalues is between zero and one. So here's uh, two examples of polynomial filters. One is called low pass spline, uh, spline filters H0. The other is high pass spline filters. And uh, the graph shift here is symmetric normalized Laplacian matrix. On the graph, you can see that on the, on the left is the original signals that piecewise constant uh, signals. In the middle is you apply to the low pass filters. You can see on the boundary between you know uh, two uh, piece, two piece, you can see I see a little bit of change, so that's because of smoothing. And for the high pass part, you can see on the boundary you can see something. Other part is almost not visible, so that's why you can see that the low pass and high pass and make a lot of sense. You know, makes uh, some uh, special uh, and, you know property for of that. So for India people's we like to design the filters to be a polynomial of signal or multiple graph shift. Then for one shift, then polynomial is one dimensional and a multiple graph shift, then this is a multivariant polynomials. But in general, we, we will see that we have to assume that those, uh, uh, those graph shifts should be assumed to be commutative. So we see that uh, this is very important for our study at least. And we believe that commutative graph shift plays a very similar rules to the one or decay delay in the classical signal processing. And in practice also, we know that a multiple graph shift may have special features for each graph shift, such as in time varying signals, which can be have different correlation to characters, factorizations for different dimensions and uh, uh, direction. So we have a very simple result to say that way. The filtering procedures from X to HX can be implemented in recursive algorithm contain final state with the output after each, uh, each vertex be updated from a weighted sum of the input of, of neighboring uh, adjacent vertex in the previous state. So we just use the data of the adjacent vertex. We don't use the far away, so just adjacent uh, vertex. That's a very important. So that's why we call the implementation at the vertex level. So now let's go to the, the next topic, uh, field bank. So we have some difficulty to understand the sum sampling operator and uh, down sampling, uh, up sampling operator. So that's why we introduced a graph field bank called non subsampling graph, uh, graph field bank. It contains an another field bank and a synthesis field bank. So here is, you can see the, the, the diagram for the, uh, for the non subsample sample graph field bank. So the analysis field bank decomposes a graph signal into two components, Y0 and Y1, carry different frequency information, as I have mentioned before, for the spline field bank. So we have, you can see the uh, different frequency information you know, on the boundary. So the important concept for the field bank is the perfect reconstructions. So you want to make sure the output of X, star, X tilde is the same as X. And for the non subsample graph field bank, 
the PR conditions can, can be characterized by a matrix equations. And also existing our synthesis field bank can be divide, uh, described by uh, stability conditions, a certain inequality. So that means it's quite a algebra or analysis. So it's look at does not include any you know graph structures there. And also you know we have some uh, method to construct the analysis filters use lifting schemes, but that's far away from uh, you know uh, good ones. So we are still working on that. But we have some uh, two different approach to construct the synthesis field bank when the analysis field bank is known. But in the case, analysis field bank is a polynomial of graph shift that have no common loads. Then we can construct synthesis field bank being also polynomials of the graph shift, such that the uh, uh, perfect constructing condition is satisfied. So if the analysis field bank are not polynomials, then of course we have to assume that it is it's a stability. Then usually we can use construct the synthesis field bank by solving the minimization. Of course, what kind of measurement would be good? We use Frobenius norm because we would like to have F0, F1 to be sparse in some way. For that least square problem, we have express solutions. That's a G0L and G1L. And H here is a positive definite, uh, 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 positive definite matrix. Then the implementation of Nazi field bank in some way is easy. But synthesis field bank, you can see that X tilde is G0 LY0 plus G1 LY1 and can be written as H negative one multiplied under the vectors. It's H0 TY0 plus H1 TY1. So it's including the inverse matrix of H and H is positive definite. So the behavior of the uh, NSGP uh, GFB depends on inverse filtering. So that's the topic we want to discuss next is what kind of property do we have for the inverse? So that's a uh, more mathematical part. So as I had mentioned that, so we have uh, the H inverse used in the uh, no, synthesis field bank. So now we want to use another concept called uh, geodesic width of a filters. That's the smallest non-negative integers such that h i j equals to zero if the distance between vertex i j is larger than sigma h. Of course, if h, uh, if, uh, h is a polynomial of graph shift, then you can verify that the ge geodesic width is smaller than uh, the degrees. So the next result we say that way, if h has small Geometric, uh, geodesic width and H inverse has exponential of diagonal decay. So that's the, that's the result about, uh, you can see the theorem there. And this is corresponding to the old days when, uh, whenever you have uh, polynomials. For trig trigonometric polynomials and is reciprocal has exp exponent decay Fourier expansions. And for the matrix, then it's a banded matrix. Then for the band matrix, we know that its inverse has exponential uh, decay. Okay, so now let's call, uh, define a new family of, uh, uh, of matrices, which is called Berlin uh, algebra. So, I mean, uh, the matrix dominates by a radio function hn. So this is radio function, it's one dimensional function and satisfy certain uh, side conditions. And for, you know, i equal to infinity, then you can see that the matrix, the entry of the matrix is dominated by a, a part, reciprocal of polynomials. That's usually called Jaffa's class that's introduced uh, by Jaffa uh, 1990. 
So the in general case for the P equal to one and alpha is zero was introduced by Burins uh, in his 1952 papers. So in 1911, so I introduced the more general case that's for arbitrary R between one and the infinity and R alpha larger than zero for the linear graph. And uh, so about definition was introduced uh, by uh, uh, my collaboration and me uh, two years ago. So we have as a result say that way. For a matrix in the burning class, if it's invertible, then it's inverse also is in that class. And also, uh, you know, you have uh, the bound estimate. So we observed that as a, the exponents alpha plus d minus r cannot improve much. You can replace by one minus epsilon by m one, but no more than that. And uh, here also I have to mention that we have to see that it has a C star algebra BL2. But also you can replace it by more general Banach algebra of uh, bounded operators on weighted L. Uh, Q we have quite similar result, but use a different approach. So use the over diagonal decay, we can do the denoising. For example, so now I put more stuff as uh, stretch holding. So very simple way. So we have the conclusion that if we do that way, then you can see that the output, the difference between output and X is bounded by C and tall. And tall is the number for the threshold. And uh, this is perfect whenever we do the dumb, you know, denoting for when the signal is collaborated by bounded noise. And also we do a little comparison with, you know, some uh, convenient method uh, in the literature. So last one is our result and, you know, the L1. So you can see uh, it's almost always, uh, you know, always the, the best. But not always. You can see that. So n is a different, you know, levels, noise levels. But also probably you can observe that you know the difference between our, uh, you know, SNR and the noise SNR, and the difference always between three and three point seven. So this is really a match with the theoretical bounds is C con C tall, because SNR is on the log scale. And this is also the, the visual understanding for the for the denoising. So the last one is uh, uh, you know, the, uh, the hour method. And on the top left is uh, the, uh, the noise added. So you can see for other methods, you can see on the boundary, the denoise level, you know, it's not in good shape. But anyway, I don't want to claim that you know, our method is much better than others. But at least it's comparable. And also our math can be implemented in distributed manners. So next, so let's discuss the stability. Stability is another you know, fundamental concept. So, and also it's heavily used to, in the analysis field bank. So I have working on the dynamic system with uh, you know, Professor uh, uh, Nanda uh, Modi for many years on the dynamic system. So in that system, you know that explaining for stability is a very, it's a very basic concept. So you can verify easily to see that, you know, the exponent stability is same as, uh, you know, the all eigenvalue of A is contained in on the left, uh, you know, uh, half plane and the invertibilities. But all those speculation is not workable for on graph because it's very hard to find all eigenvalues or to verify the invertibility. But we noticed that we can replace by stability. So use inequalities instead of the existence. And that's the, the last equivalence. So ZI minus A, the C and norm is larger than A, zero C, and also it's transpose. So it's very important, you can continue both A and the transpose. If you don't have the A transpose, then you don't have the equivalence. Then use that one, then you can do the localizations. So we see that, you know, you can only verify the local stability instead of global stability. So, so all your problem is uh, global stability now is the local stability. Of course, make sure the constant is not so small. 
That's why we have to make it BN0 is larger, you know, because it's, uh, the scale of N0 negative one. So N0, that's uh, the number of neighborhood, you know, the radius of, you know, of that. Then after that, then it's a local criteria. So we can use that one to adjust the dynamic system. Because sometimes for the dynamic system, you want to adjust the state matrix to improve uh, the ex exponential stability. So now you system, you can uh, find a way, local way to do that. So you have to increase or decrease the ARJ for any particular RJ and J. You know, we don't know the, the whole state matrix, just particular ARJ can adjust it. And the state sampling also is another topic, you know, I, I'm my favorite topic. So stability is another important concept. So sampling is, you know, start from signal to some data. And in most cases, it can describe by some sensing uh, matrix. And for sensing matrix, also you can do the same things. You know, you can do localize. So, but unlike you know, localization, you know, is that we want to cut is a submatrix, but this submatrix is not square match. It's a submatrix is a fat matrix. And stability of that submatrix if I have the uniform stability, then you also have as a global stability. And this is, uh, I think it's very good for the design of a low distributed sampling and reconstruction against supplement and replacement and impression of the agents. Because in the sampling procedures, some agents probably lost power or you want to replace it by the new device. Then, so, I know, is that good? I mean, it says, you know, it still can the counter signal or not. So that's a problem, right? But you just replace one agent, you know, device. So this is a wide open areas. And, uh, you know, we have a lot of studies working on the, you know, sampling our panel window space. And also we can see a lot of papers on reproducing candle spaces. But I think it is a wide open area to working on the samplings on graph. Now let's go to the last topic of, uh, uh, it's called uh, distributed implementation of inverse uh, filtering. So inverse filtering, uh, as I said, it's, uh, it's appeared in the uh, single reconstructions and also in the, uh, our filter banks. So inverse filtering essentially is that we want to uh, map from Y to the H inverse Y. If H and when H is invertible and H have good property. Of course, if H inverse have good property, then it's done, right? So for most probably H inverse is does not have good property. So the idea, most of uh, the ideas is probably you use, we want to use iterative uh, algorithm to solve the linear system HX equal to Y. So today I want to introduce three uh, algorithms all of them can be implemented at the vertex levels. The first one is it's a relative approximation algorithm when H is a polynomial of graph shift. A second one is preconditioned greater decent algorithm. And the last one is iterative divide and conquer algorithm. Let's start from the iterative approximation algorithm. You start from H is a polynomial of graph shift. So our assumption is that the all graph shift shift has their joint spectrums contained in, uh, in a cubic. And also the polynomial edge does not vanish on the cubic. Then we know that one of edge is a smooth function. So we have uh, the Fourier expansion in terms of shifted shift shift uh, polynomial. Of course, you can use an other type of polynomial uh, basis. Because one of H is smooth, so the partial sum converges to one of H exponentially. So use that partial sum, we can define the approximation filters GK, and then we propose a iterative approximation algorithm. So it's given by so ZM is GK EM minus one, and EM 
as EM minus one by this HM minus one. That's the essential is the residues. So XM is updated. So you can consider X or ZM as a correction. Then we prove that, you know, this algorithm converges exponentially to the uh, solutions we want H inverse Y exponentially whenever BK is less than one. Of course, this is satisfied when K is larger. But in numerical analysis, you know, our numeric simulation, we verify that, you know, usually K is just one and two. In most cases, it works well. So that means uh, the numeric cost is not a uh, 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 huge. And also uh, because each iteration is encoding the uh, filterings associated with polynomial filters. So it can be implemented at vertex levels, which each step contains data exchanging among the Johnson vertex only. Of course, you, know, you need to do the weighted linear combination for those values at, at Johnson metrics. So this is certainly a combination of the, the data. So next is uh, it's called preconditioned grand descent algorithm. So we know that for arbitrary filters, it's not necessary to be uh, polynomials of graph shift. And this conventional method uh, approach is grand descent. In that descent method, we have the primary beta. In most of our papers, literature say, okay, that's the beta. So no one tell you how to choose the beta. And in fact, you can choose the beta. And so optimal uh, step size is, is, uh, is by, given by two over the minimum eigenvalues of HTH plus the maximum eigenvalues of HTX. So you have to use the eigenvalues of HTH to figure out the optimals. But you know that to find eigenvalue for the, uh, for the HTH is super expensive. You have to evaluate in a central facility. So it's not workable for a spatially distributed network. So our approach is inspired by the preconditioned system. So we try to, instead of solve HX equal to Y, we say we solved HQ inverse Z equal to Y and the Q is preconditioned. And we use still the, use the same grand descent method to the preconditioned linear system. But we hit that time, we choose beta equal to one. Okay, so no selection of betas, no problem for that. And after simplification, you can see that this is same as the XM equal to this. If compare with, uh, you know, the, our proposed algorithm with the original, you know, grand descent uh, algorithm, the difference is that look like that we replace the beta, the number beta, by the matrix Q negative T. But this replace is significant. So we see that in the next two slides. We have a convergence, no problems. So it's quite similar. Of course, we need to select the preconditioner properly to make sure Q is diagonal matrix and satisfy HTX. Uh, it's, uh, it's less than Q square. Then that precondition, the gradient distance method converges exponentially. Luckily, also you can use this algorithm with Y equal to zero, find the eigenvalues. And this is a surprise uh, to us. And also you can, whenever the edge is, is a hyperlink matrix, and then the stuff, the solution eventually will be uh, our eigenvectors, principal eigenvectors associate, uh, uh, you know, can be used to identify the local inference of vertex on uh, 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 its neighborhood. So it's related to the geometry um, of the graph. So this is, uh, I think it's could be very useful uh, later, but we have not explored further on that. So next, now is really the problem of how to construct uh, the preconditioned queue. So here's a, here's a way to construct the key. This is a pH is a one example. So it's a maximum, you know, also, you know, you can see a couple of maximum. And this is really locally constructed. So you have the algorithm there. So I don't think I have much time now left. So, but we can prove that for such construct H is satisfied HTH 
is less than pH square. So the last algorithm I will mention is called interactive divide and conquer algorithm. So divide is that you divide the graph into a family of overlapped summer graphs and GI. Then uh, how to conquer? Conquer means we solve the, you know, some local linear squares, uh, a problems. So X, K, I, that's a solution. So because it's this square problem, you can find solution exactly. Then you have many solutions, right? So but we don't use uh, the solutions, but to use the portion of that, because so here you can see that X, K, R, that's the truncation operators sent as a K and radius R. But the XKR is radius to us. So essentially you use this, you know, the central data of the XK to use that, but then we patch them together to have a good approximation for that. Our numerical situation indicates that this XK provides a very good approximation to the original global solutions, except the boundary effect. So because we observe boundary effect, that's why we cut it. So the next is of Gordon. So you can see that. So this is a local province. Of course, you have also we do the you know residues. Then you know you have the update. So that's our Gordon. We do that. Then we have the convergence. Of course, you have to choose our, our you know uh, you know in certain way a little bit larger, but the, in, in practice probably R is not that larger. And then very importantly is that uh, you know we have discussed uh, uh, the least square problems. Also, it can extend to the you know uh, general uh, minimizing each problem. That's what we have. The fx is summation of uh, convex functions, and each fi depends only on the variables in the sigma field of the vertex ai. So this is uh, for the uh, for the least square problem. This is really the the ice component of matrix A applied to x minus vi. So that's what we have. So this is definitely, this is an uh, extension of the, uh, the original problems. Okay, so that's the summary. So I think the, you know, the mathematical signal processing on graph is important as, you know, it's, as I said, including you know, graph theories, uh, you know, harmonic analysis, numerical analysis, and many other uh, uh, math branch. And we see many uh, development but still, you still have many topics, many challenges. And I, you know, essentially, I think I spend almost one third of my slides and, and topics on the uh, distributed algorithm. And I think the algorithm provide a very important tool for data processing on graph. And their implementation at the vertex level are crucial for many real problems on the network of large size. So I will say that the way. So in my talk, I present only some of my understandings on filters and inverse filters and graph, field banks, local stifications of stabilities and distributed algorithm for inverse filters. I cannot, I have not covered many important topics in the graph signal processing. So luckily, we have two special issues. One is the uh, IGP magazine on signal processing, and the other one is on the uh, Journal of Fourier Analysis and Applications. There are many papers cover various topics of uh, that field. I think I have uh, stopped here. Thank you, and happy and healthy uh, 2021. Thank you, Q. Thank you very much for a great talk.